largest single-seater striker fighter in production for the Navy is the Westland Wyvern TF2. Armed with cannons in the wings and carrying a torpedo externally under the fuselage, the Wyvern is the latest example of the recent naval policy of employing single-seater aircraft. Welcome to another review here at Frontline Model Lobbies and today we have the Wyvern S4 late version by Trumpeter in 48 scale and there's one particular main reason why I picked this kit and that is because there's no reviews on YouTube that is that is basically the main reason the second not so main reason is that me and Lenny at RTB Models we're going to be building this one and this is going to be after Telford then, sort of November, December time. And this is going to be our uh, build. So, I'm going to stop talking crap. Let's have a look in the box. Right, here we go. I'm not going to mess about. I'm not going to beat about the Bosch. So, let's just look inside what we've got in the box. So, at least I don't have to fight to get into this one. So we've got a white sprue with some cogs in there. We've got the weapons and that on that sprue. Fuel tanks and wings on there and a few other bits and bobs. We've got the canopy. It's not in a bag, I must admit I did take it out. Also we've got the front middle section uh, wing and a few other bits and bobs on there. Wings and that on there. Feels large and stuff and cockpit in there. We've got some metal parts here. Uh, we've got the colour call outs, decals, good old instructions, and last but not least, we've got some photo etched and a bit of acetate. So, with that in mind, give me two seconds and I'll show you the instructions. Alrighty then, so let's go through these instructions. And as you can see on the main page, it's got the stuff on there that tells you what not to do, don't cut yourself, yada, 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 so and so and so forth. So let's push through that. And then straight on to the next page, which shows you this brew call outs, which you can see that it's quite comprehensive, especially for a kit from 2006, so not too bad there. So moving on. So with it being an aircraft kit, obviously you start off with the cockpit. So you start off with the injection seat, you've got a nice bit of photo etch there. Putting the main tub together, you've got side consoles going on. It is a trumpeter kit, so do expect a trumpeter cockpit. It is from 2006, so expect that. And not only that, the aircraft is from the 1950s, so expect that as well. Putting the front part of the prop together, and you've got your shaft that's going in there. Ooh, uh. Over the page, you put in the other part of the control rotating prop together, and these are your working parts in there, uh, which is the part of the nose section that goes in the fuselage, and obviously these will rotate, but I'm not quite sure you why you want to do that. Then put in your torpedo together, you've got rockets to go together there, and it's nice inclusion with a camera, and then you put that nose section on there with the control rotating prop and all the rest of the bits on there. As you can see, you've got some nice, quite solid tabs which fit into the fuselage, so that should be quite a solid fit. So moving on, you've got your RTO packs there, your rocket-assisted takeoff. You've got bombs, 1,000-pounders, 
and then you're putting your main wing section together which will fit onto the fuselage and then you've got a load or well, a million and one holes by the looks of it it's here in here in here in here so you've got different options moving on you put in your main gear together uh, all your wheels which is nice to have the separate tyres and then you put in the wing section down onto the fuselage with the uh, with your flaps and the rear hook again you've got this bomb here which is for the main section down the centre line and then you've got three different options for the wing so you've got your rockets, fuel tanks or bomb for the wings and again you've got the same sort of different options for the centre line so you've got fuel tank, torpedo or bomb which is nice moving on uh, you put in your main gear on and the main doors and that little bit of a scoop there then you put in your canopy in and the rear side which I think is awesome on this aircraft it's awesome on a car but the side um, exhaust pods that go on the side of the fuselage which is cool then you go on to the horizontal stabilizers left and right corresponding and then the wing tips and then your left and right air brakes that will go on there for the outer bits then putting it all together putting your rockets on there and then that's basically one option that you can have with your folded wing tip basically a carbon copy for the other side so this is your right side so nothing really much to talk about on there and then you're putting it all together so you've got the option of either putting the wings out with the horizontal stabilizers as you can see or you've got the wings folded so whether these parts for the folded or the straight bit which will be looking like that whether these mean that you can unfold it and, and do whichever i've not built this kit but it would be nice to know if you could do that if you can't you've got the option of either or really or buy two kits and do it one fold and one straight then you've got your external stores so you've got your bombs rockets fuel tanks torpedo or centerline tank and that comprises the instructions next you've got your color call outs so you've got the Suez crisis and then you've got two options down at the bottom 1957 and 58 art royal and hms eagle so it's basically which option do you really want to do i do like these but Suez Crisis, not the one for me to be honest with you, this is the last time that Great Britain was great and we sort of failed in the Suez Crisis but either way I'll gloss over that. So you've got two options. And then your decals. So, they look in register, they're very glossy as you can see. Um, there's very little in the way of the carrier film going around apart from obviously the lettering as you can see there there's quite a lot of carry film the Suez crisis markings i'd probably actually paint them on rather than doing the decals but you have got decals if you don't want to and if i bring you in close the details are very nice and very crisp all the way through and again 2006 not too bad whether these will go down and conform to all the you know details on the kit that's another question but you have got it there Last but not least, you've got the photo etched. So you've got uh, very little in the way of the photo etched, that being said. And you have got a bit of acetate film, a bit of white paint on the back of that, stick it on the back and your job's a good one really. And there you have it. Alrighty then, so we might as well start off with sprue A. And as you can see on there, you've got the fuselage main halves. You've got the centerline tank main halves and also you've got the cockpit details in there and a few of the bits and bobs. So I don't know if you remember Trumpeter of old, I know I do, but what you used to get is that on the top and bottom half of the fuselages, you used to get the details seem to disappear and run into nothing. Whereas this one, it, it does, I must admit, look a slightly bit better. Try and get it into focus. Uh, but the rivet detail is a bit soft whereas the panel lining doesn't look too bad to be honest with you and that is the case the same at the back of the fuselage other than that the rest of the rivet detail and the panel lining is very very fine 
to a point. Um, it's not exactly like Eddard quality, but that being said, it is an old kit, so it's not too bad for its age, to be honest with you. So very, very crisp, as you, as you can see going all the way through. The cockpit details is not too bad. The ejection seat, I suppose you can probably fit another one in there or do some scratch building. Cockpit floor is not too bad. On the back side, for the interior of the cockpit, I don't think you're going to see that injection pin mark there and the same on the other side, but you'll just have to see. But other than that, not too bad. The only other thing that I've noticed is that the exhaust pipes are not hollow. So you're going to have to do either some funky painting, drilling, or you could probably scratch build them with some funny shaped pipe. I'm not quite sure how you'd do that. But other than that, that is not too bad at all. Sprue B. So obviously this comprises the outer wing sections, the horizontal stabilizers, the main landing gear and all the doors and everything corresponding. So as you can see, all the detail is very crisp again, very similar to the fuselage. In fact, it is exactly like the fuselage. So there's, it's not quite like some of the other kits that I've seen from newer manufacturers where it is very different as you go through, say from the wings to the fuselage, this is similar all the way through. Yeah, I've got injection pin marks like them too, which are mahoosive. But there again, you haven't got anything in that one, so I'm very puzzled why. Maybe, maybe that's too big to get it out, to be honest with you. But that is sprue B. So moving on to sprue C, and as you can see on here, you've got your prop and everything. Um, you've got the front part that will stick out of the front fuselage that the props will connect to on the end, spinner and everything else on there. So again, the midsection wing to the fuselage join, very nice. Um, panel line and the rivets are very the same. You've got moulded in dive brakes, I'm guessing that's what they are. Um, torpedoes, torpedo, you can't go wrong with that. The prop yes bit of flash on there but quick swipe with a sanding stick you should get away with that um there's certain parts on the back of here which i've got no injection pin marks no bad sort of in the way of details no sink marks on the props which are cool and again on these uh rear doors for the rear landing gear is pretty nice also so that is sprue c Moving on to sprue D, and you've got the inner board wing sections and all the other bits and bobs for the uh, air brake, uh, yeah, the air brakes, the wing tips, and the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks look pretty nice as well. Um, shame that they're not one piece again, because you've got to try and sort of not obliterate this bar that goes round, but either way. The inner board top half of the wings. As you can see, same as the fuselage, no compromising detail there whatsoever. And on the back side, you've got the inner board um, landing gear for the main gear. The only downside is that that um, injection pin mark might be in the way. But other than that, these sections here are one piece, which is nice. So nothing wrong with them. These are obviously your wing sections that fit in the inside for the folded and non-folded sections. And that is sprue D. Sprue E, obviously you can see times two, so we'll have a look at one. And this has your bombs and your rockets and your rato packs. The rato packs are not drilled out as you can fully well imagine. But that being said, those rockets are not too bad for an injection molded type. You have got a bit of sink marks on there. But on the back side, again, not too bad. A bit of flash on it. Or shall I say a seam mould line going round. But yeah, not too bad on that one, sprue E. So on to the last two sprues. Obviously you've got the sprue F, which is the canopy sections. And as you can see there, it has got a bit of crazing on there, as you can see there, on the main front part. The rear part has got some scratches on there. Don't know if you're going to be able to see them. But that being said, the framing looks 
very nicely done. Um, would take a mask very well. So that is sprue F. And finally, we have sprue G, which as you can see, has got all the cogs on there to rotate the front prop. So as it being a control rotating prop, it's what well, if it's your option and you like doing that, then fair enough. I'm not really much of a fan, but it is a nice quirky item. So well done Trumpeter to adding this and we'll see if it works or not. So that is all the sprues complete. And there we have it, that is the review of the Wyvern S4 by Trumpeter in 148 scale. Now obviously you can take away this video and make up your own mind, your own personal opinion on whether this kit is right for you. That might be that the surface detail is a bit too overly done. Uh, me personally, I don't find a particular problem with that. At least I've got something to weather to, but that's just, just me. Other things that you might find is that the exhaust might not be what you particularly want. It's not hollow and all this, that and the other. The cockpit is not as detailed. But what you've got to remember is this is a kit going back to 2006. And not only that, I think this kit holds up to newer manufactured kits that are made today. That being said, the decals look in register and look particularly nice for the kit and the instructions look very nicely laid out and I don't see a particular problem with this kit. I have seen quite a lot being built up at model shows so it just inspires me really to build this one and like I said we're going to do this in November, me and Lenny. So hopefully it might be a video build, but we'll have to see. So anyway, I just want to say thank you for watching and I will see you again next time. Cheerio.